he's rocking around a 40% rail right now, so he's definitely doing his part. Right now, he's actually got more frags than Clamp, but Clamp now running the quad. He's got both of his opponents caught out in the quad room, and now off of the spawns, Clamp is going to try to milk it for all it's worth. And Gills is going to be getting a little bit of glory himself, though. Clamp yeah, Gills is taking all the, pretty good all the kills. Stat. <laughs> yeah. hey Clamp's man, like, come on, dude! I, I got the quad! <laughs> ah, but, you know, at this point, though, that run, that run gave him a 10-frag lead, uh, quite frankly. So, that might be the critical shifting point that we, that we needed to see. I'm going to stick with Gills for a little bit, because I think you're right. He is running a really good game, and, um, you know, what, what's, uh, what's kind of really impressive about it is... Uh, he tends to assist Clamp okay and kind of show up at the right time. Like here he's going to muscle out and he just he just kind of takes long. I was actually expecting Clamp okay to come in and assist. Like there. They they work together. Clamp okay. Oh shit. Clamp okay gets his LG bead. Gills gets his rail on. So, uh, you know, they are working together really well. And um, it's nice to see that just in the last two or three minutes they've been able to put everything together and start uh, getting a nice solid lead. But wow. uh, here again. Clamp okay, facing off against Mesta, Gills comes up behind and gets the easy and free frag, so um, a little bit more teamwork like that, and uh, they're going to run away with this thing in the last five minutes. Yeah, and again, there's a whole metric of 2v2 TDM that we can't get first-hand experience with on the stream because you can't see exactly how these guys are coordinating, but you can try to pick up, you know, when, are, when one person enters an area, when does his teammate come to assist? At what point does that happen? When it comes to attacking the quad room, at what point does, you know, the other teammate come in? What kind of stack does he have? Are you leaving items up for your teammate? Uh, are you doing, you know, full stack for one guy, or are you doing, you know, one mega one? red those kind of issues need to be examined here and it's wow wow what the playing ping pong with paramedics here <laughs> holy crap yeah that is called a quad run i think that was i, I kind of lost count quite frankly but that was a beautiful thing to see and at this point paramedics have to be kind of going well you know kind of fuck my life at this moment because with a 10 yeah, frag we run really Mm. Yeah. Now the biggest thing that we that we've been seeing is that they're no longer able to have that stranglehold on the quad room, and it really was when Clamp OK and Gill started to get the quads. That's when the score shifted. Um, whereas you know every other time the score was within one or two. So I think in the last five minutes the paramedics can figure out how to secure quad. We'll do okay, but we're watching Clamp OK with 200 armor. Uh, Gills is the guy kind of on the front line, trying to trying to basically get the attention of everybody. Um, and then Clamp's coming in with the stack and trying to clean up. But at that point, he's going to get double teamed because Gills was totally out of the picture. So this next quad, this could be Paramedics' squad, but they've got to put this thing together really quickly. And Mesta should not be waiting for this. He should be assisting. Wonku does get the frag, but now if we go and take a look at him, he's really hurt. He has no armor, and uh, you know this next quad, they need to be start, starting to take over this room, and uh, basically, uh, because no items are going to be coming up except for red, um, you know, before before the quad, and getting the red again this before is quad is a bit risky. <laughs> Clamp again showing his magic with those grenades, this time against himself, but Mesa's gonna be here. He might get MG'd off here, or at least down really enough where Gills is gonna try to come in. But now Mesta does have the quad. Now what he really needs to find is bodies. It's yeah. gonna come down to how much oh wow, beautiful aggression by Gills is just gonna shut that quad run down, saying, Nope, this quad run is not your chance to get back into the game. This is over, this is ours. And one of the things I've been wondering is that we are seeing a lot of fights down in the bottom of the map where that railgun spawns, and more often than not, paramedics does end up the victor in those situations with really nice drop downs, but from that point what kind of opportunities do you have for follow-ups? What kind of opportunities do you have for spawn frags? Not many. You've got to do quite a bit of hoofing before you get back to a place where you can really start to lay in the pain on your opponents. Right. I mean, you can always coordinate it with your teammate, but um, you know, another thing that I've noticed is that and it seems to be working out really, really well for uh, Clamp OK's team, which is even if they don't get the quad, they're doing so much damage to the guy who's potentially going to be grabbing it. And you can see, like, Clamp OK in that last grab, 
he came in and um, he came in and basically just used his MG and he's like I'm going to shoot you for as long as I can as long as you you know keep missing me because we cannot let you have a run because you know if we take a look at it uh, you know that <laughs> the quad runs are what are kind of making a break in this game and at this point it's all about maintenance and so um, we have not seen paramedics return the favor yeah I'm watching it I'm loving it but <laughs> Honestly, the, the biggest shift is is how they're dealing with the quad runs, and it's netted them, you know, uh, what twenty five frag lead. So, but yeah, very very nice. Absolutely He's brought his rail lead. accuracy up to forty, and it was uh, at least thirty earlier. So um, he's used it quite a bit. And so here we go, 30, 32 health again. The quad carrier extremely low, as he attempts to make his run and can be rocketed off, or at this point, nearly railed off. And I'm here's gonna... another thing, uh, because you leave the quad runner at a pretty low amount of health, that really necessitates only one real exit for the quad runner. He has to take that right way out, grab the 50, and if it's not there, the 225s. And based on that, when you spawn, you can know exactly where you need to go in order to minimize your amount of exposure to the quad guy. What? <laughs> <laughs> nice trap there, buddy. Yeah, that's how you said trap. It was awesome. Deadly trap. Uh. I'm gonna go through and show off some accuracies here. And uh, very, very solid play all around. But uh, I have to say, uh, Clamp OK and Gills looking pretty solid at this point. 33% uh, overall for Clamp, 27 for Gills. And if we take a look though, six impressives for Clamp, and we saw them largely on a, actually a single run. Uh, three impressions for Wonko. Didn't see how many messed ahead. Now, I do want to say, though, this was only a 25-point map. I mean, in the world of 2v2 TDM, that's not, that's not anywhere near a blowout. So, yeah. we're going to be moving right into map number two. This is the best of three, unless things have drastically changed. Not and we're going to be seeing that come up. Okay, good, good, good. So, we're going to be seeing that coming up right away, hopefully. And this is going to be DM6. Now, DM6, you know, for all the complaints that duelers get because they they like to play it a certain way and, and aren't open to alternatives that we actually saw some nice demonstrations of in the uh, oh, yeah. Silent Gamers. But in Team Deathmatch, this map is a beautiful thing. Um, because uh, we need to take a look at the items. They're a little bit different than uh, in 1v1. Uh, quad spawns here on the uh, the big Q in the center arena. Rocket launcher spawns in its normal spot on the top of the big jump pad. This, however, is a different spawn point. Uh, we have the yellow armor spawning rather than the red armor. Which um, So basically, armors are reversed in 1v1. The other big change is that the weapons of lightning gun and plasma gun are reversed as well. And so that is uh, a pretty big deal when it comes to the balance of this map in Team Deathmatch. Because this area... Uh, the pillars becomes far more central. There's also, um, let's see, I believe there's an extra 50 health bubble here uh, that isn't uh, present in 1v1. I think uh, just about everything else stays the same. There's a railgun here on the bridge, um, or across from the bridge, as is the norm. And um, hopefully we'll see F3s out of these guys pretty soon. It looks like paramedics are ready to go. They have uh, licked their wounds and thrown on some uh, band-aids. Totally forgot to set my teams earlier. Prepare your team. There we Dude, go. That's all right. It's been a crazy night, but it's about to get turned up a notch here. Paramedics V C O K D M six. All right, we're gonna watch Mesta, and he looks like he spawns over near R A. The first R A though is gonna go to Clamp O K, and he's got a little bit of double team. And Gills is gonna get that first frag with the plasma gun. He hits straight over to rail, and uh, the rail gun I think in two v two in some ways is almost more useful than having it in one v one. And Gills is showing us why. Oh my God. That's work fair. Now, absolutely, and he's definitely the guy we're going to be wanting to see here, but he's going to get caught up from both sides, and Wonko's going to be able to take them down, taking control of the pillars, which in TDM is where the red armor spawns, of course. Now, they've got good control here, but look at this, Wonko, 65 health, he does have railgun, though, so he can exit this and try and do some initial damage before that gets right. attacked. Nice rocket pop-up with the rail, and Wonko, again, with there great rail 